Hi everybody, uh, this is Mr. Nolan, and uh, what I would like to do with you in this video is show you how to draw what is called a climatograph or a climate graph. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like first, just so that we can get a sense for what this uh, looks like. Uh, this is one example of a uh, climatograph, uh, and I might be a little small on your screen, but uh, what you should be able to see is that uh, this, this one is for London. Uh, and uh, there's actually two ways that, that information is graphed on this graph. One way is with bars. You can see those blue bars there. And another way is with a line, and this line is red. Now the bars indicate precipitation. Now precipitation comes in a few forms. There's snow and rain are the big ones, but there's also sleet and hail and even things like fog and things like that. But um, So precipitation is just water that's coming down from the sky. Temperature, you know, is just exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's temperature. It's how warm the air is. So this graph uh, has two ways to communicate information over time. There's months on the bottom, starting with January, the first month, ending with December. Uh, and uh, there's our precipitation and our temperature. Because there's two ways to show information on here, we actually need two axes. Now you'll notice on this particular climate graph, there's more than one way to make these, but on this, in this example, the left y-axis is precipitation. What that means is each of these blue bars is referencing the left y-axis. So if I were to look at one of these bars, I can tell that in July, uh, there's about 45 millimeters of precipitation. Uh, but in December in London, there's about 78 uh, millimeters of precipitation or so. Or so. Uh, so we can tell that, okay, this is how much water falls in that location given each month. It's just the average for each month. These are usually based on historical data. Um, the temperature, we actually connect it in a line graph, basically just to tell the two types of information apart. We have precipitation as bars, the line is temperature, so it's very easy to get a quick sense, okay, what is London's climate like? Well, it's warm in the summer and it's pretty cool in the winter, uh, and then, you know, it's sort of wet all year round. There's a little bit dry sort of in the summer, but, but it's generally pretty wet. So this is very convenient. It, com it communicates lots of information in a short amount of time. Uh, and you can compare different locations, too. Like, here's a totally different location. This is Savannah, Georgia. You can tell they get all their rain uh, in the summer times, J uh, July and August. And they stay pretty darn warm all, all year round. Uh, so it's, uh, these are very convenient for, for comparing uh, different locations, how their, their climates work. But they can be a little bit frustrating to try to actually draw or create. So I want to show you how to do this based on information uh, that we have uh, that's handed to us. So our goal in this video is to be able to draw a climate graph with a double y-axis, like I showed you, that shows temperature and precipitation. So we're going to do both of these. Now just as sort of an example, um, we're going to do the climatograph of Macomb, Michigan. This is about where we live. And so to do that, we need climate data. Now you might be handed climate data. I'm going to show you how to go out and find it. Now, thanks to the great tools that Google has produced for us, um, this is actually very, very easy just using Google. So if you want to get climate data, all you have to do is open up Chrome. That's the way that Google works best. Uh, open up a brand new tab. And I'm actually going to go to Google.com. Right. So here I am. I'm now in the Google website. And in this little search box, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type uh, Macomb, Michigan climate. Just as an example, you can type in any location followed by the word climate. And if you press enter, you'll notice here, here's some climate information. It's not all of it. Uh, if I go down here and find all months and click on that, look at this. It shows all of the climate data for Macomb uh, Township, Michigan. Uh, these are historical averages. And it gives us a high and a low. Now we can uh, graph just the high or we can graph just the low. We, we can also include the average if we want. Um, over here, uh, Google reports the precipitation a little bit odd. Instead of giving inches or millimeters or some actual length, it gives days. I honestly don't know why they do that. Uh, I'm sure somebody has a reason for that, but we, they actually record the number of days that it rains. Um, we can use that just for the purpose of this video, and it's a nice whole number. Uh, but usually, uh, a climatograph uses, a, a, you know, millimeters or inches or some unit of m length that, that shows, okay, how deep is the water that has fallen. But anyways, uh, here's our data, and we want to figure out how to graph this. 
So the first thing to recognize is that time is going to have to go on the X. That's going to go on the bottom axis, and we can just start with January and move all the way for, through December. Uh, you can write out the whole name, or you can just write the letter J. J, F, M, A, M, J, J, A. And even though, yes, some repeat, everybody knows what those stand for. They know that they stand for certain months. So we can just put those on the X, and then we can put our temperatures on the Y. So let's just worry about our X right now. Uh, we're just going to put our months here. So um, on this this uh, diagram here, we're going to go ahead and put our months on the x-axis. Okay, so there's our time on the x-axis, uh, and we would really want to include a data label that says, uh, you know, month, which I'll add later. Um, and uh, we have to take our data, and we actually have to graph it according to the right y-axis. So let's just look at the data that we have. Um, let's do precipitation first, because it's probably the easiest. And uh, we've got a maximum of, it looks like, six days that we need to allot for. Um, so in this case, just in this particular case, if we were to um, sort of scale the y-axis on the left, maybe let's, just, um, maybe let's just make it up to 10. That way we can easily fit all the way from 0 to 6 on there. So I'm going to go ahead and label our y-axis, our precipitation, 1 through 10. Okay, there's our axis for precipitation. We only made it up to 9, but that's okay. Uh, and if we look at our temperatures, let's look at the highest temperature here. Um, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to graph one. Let's just do the highs. So the highs, it looks like the very highest is 93 degrees, and that's in July. Uh, and lowest of the highs is, looks like, 35. So our graph on the temperature has to span all the way from 35 uh, Fahrenheit all the way up to 93 Um Let's just let's just go zero to a hundred. I mean that's pretty easy to do. So uh, on our uh, other y-axis over here, we're going to go all the way from zero to a hundred, kind of in a similar manner. And that's going to be talking about temperature. Okay, so there's our axis for temperature. So we have our two axes all ready to go. Precipitation's ready. Temperature's ready. We just have to put the data down. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here, and for each month, I'm just going to go ahead and put the uh, well, let's do start with precipitation. For each month, I'll just go ahead and, and record the precipitation and create uh, bars out of them so that our precipitation, just like these other graphs that we looked at, uh, the precipitation comes in as a bar. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, so there is precipitation. I've just gone ahead and added bars for each one. Uh, you can tell I don't have the uh, the, the very straightest uh, bar drawing ability here, but um, we can at least see, okay, what's about the general trend. It looks like it's a little wetter in the summer than in the winter. Uh, the uh, May, June, July, it looks like we get a little bit more um, precipitation there. So now we're going to do temperature. And in order to distinguish these, we're going to do temperature as a line instead of as bars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right back to the data here, and I'm just going to take all my highs, and I'm going to graph those as dots here, and then connect the dots, right? Because if we're going to show a change over time for the temperature, we might as well actually connect the dots. So that's the first thing I'll do is I'll put dots for all of these temperatures on this graph. All right, so here are my approximate uh, temperatures as, as dots. And so at this point, <clears throat> all I have to do is just connect these with a line. Okay, uh, and there's you can see this, this tiny dip in my board. That's because of the smart board. But we can see there's, all right, we see that it's as predictable as we would expect. It gets warmer in the summertime and that gets cool in the, in the winter. This is what a climatograph for Macomb would look like. And the whole point of this video is just to show you how to do that. So now it's pretty easy to compare what is the precipitation doing and what is the temperature doing. And if you do this for multiple locations, you can even compare different locations. And you can start to say, well, why, why is one different from the other? So I hope that you found this helpful uh, for kind of the, some of the logic and, and maybe where would you find some of the data for drawing your own climatograph uh, by location. So now you should be able to draw a climatograph with a double axis that shows temperature and precipitation.